Hey everybody, it's time to explain Ordinary Life by The Weeknd. If you've been keeping track, you've probably seen that I've explained almost every single song from the album. I'm almost done. After this one gets posted, there'll be two more to come, and then there'll be an album review of the entire thing. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget to subscribe and check out the playlist down in the description for all of these explanations. There's also a link to Spotify where you can listen to these songs. I've been explaining these songs from Starboy, and I've learned a ton about The Weeknd. Probably more than I wanted to know, honestly. But I have to say that Ordinary Life is one of my favorite songs lyrically. It has everything that I love about The Weeknd, which is kind of this, you know, what I'm doing is probably a bad idea and it's wrong and I don't like it and I could live an ordinary life. Nah, I'm just gonna keep doing what I wanna do. And that's why I drew this picture for it. A lot of what The Weeknd writes about, a lot of songs on Starboy, and I think the album as a whole, is kind of about his conflict between wanting to be a good person and realizing that he could be a good person if he tried, and the fact of like who he is and who he's become, the star boy that his fans have made him. Represented by the drugs and the money and the, the alcohol and the beautiful women and the fast cars. And Ordinary Life is probably the most explicit description of this difficult decision he's making. It's super deep, it's really interesting, let me explain. Hey everybody, I'm Clifford Stummy, the Pop Song Professor. Welcome to my YouTube channel where we're all about helping music lovers like you to understand the deeper meanings of popular songs so that you can know what your artists are saying and enjoy your music more. Today we're talking about Ordinary Life by The Weeknd, and like I said before, one of my favorite songs off this album. This song follows a simple structure. In fact, it's very similar to basically all of the structures from this album. This album is basically verse, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, bridge, chorus. At least most of them are pretty close to that. But in the song, the different kinds of stanzas serve different purposes. So the verses are kind of talking about things that he really likes about his not ordinary life. The pre-chorus poses this question, well, I could be good. And the chorus kind of gives the answer of, nah, this isn't an ordinary life. I'm not really gonna do that. And the bridge confirms his decision. I'm not gonna read the beginning lyrics from the verse. Basically, he's talking about a woman giving him oral sex while he's driving. And it's actually pretty specific and graphic. And he finishes the verse by claiming, like James Dean, I'ma die when I'm young. So he's living this exciting life full of interesting, crazy experiences and, and doing a lot of like different things that he likes. And he's not really looking forward to old age or anything like that. He's just, he's living in the moment and he thinks that, that probably means that he's gonna take risks that could lead him to dying early. Verse two has got some actually pretty cool imagery in it. He sings, Valhalla is where all the righteous are led, which in Norse mythology is kind of like their heaven. And then he continues, Mulholland's where all the damned will be kept. Mulholland's a famous road in like the LA, California area, often connected with like famous people and all of the crazy stuff that happens out in LA. Now, I don't really know why he picked Norse mythology, especially since he's always wearing a cross, right? A Christian cross, sometimes a crucifix even. My best guess is that Valhalla and Mulholland sound similar. So it's very poetic and interesting. But he's drawing this sharp distinction between heaven, where good people go, right? And Mulholland, where the famous people go. And he's kind of saying that famous people, successful people who do all these crazy things and do what they want are probably gonna do wrong things that will keep them out of heaven. And he's embracing that second one. Sometimes I just wanna kind of reach out to the weekend and be like, Bro, like your songs are all about how you know there's a choice and you're gonna continue making the choice. He never really gives like a full clear reason for why he keeps making the choice he does. So it really comes across as something that's probably impulsive. It's just a habit. It's kind of the situation he's in. And he's letting his environment shape him rather than shaping his environment, which is hilariously weird because he's such like a creative, interesting, successful person. You would think he would be able to shape his environment and do that. But maybe the one beast that he is admitting he can't tame is himself. I don't know. I feel like that's kind of a lot to assume based on a carefully curated song. And we have to remember that The Weeknd is like a stage name and a and a personality and Abel Tesfaye is actually who he is, right? So they may be different. Maybe kind of like The Weeknd is where he like acts out and kind of works through all of these compulsions and maybe he's actually a really tame person. But in any case, The Weeknd is making some rough decisions that are kind of having negative consequences for him. But I'm still super glad that he's honest and open about this struggle. Anyway, he continues by explicitly stating like this, this controversy, devil on my lap and a cross on my neck. So somebody's giving like a lap dance. When he says devil, he's referring to like temptation and lust and stuff, uh, but he's still wearing this cross. So what kind of person gets a lap dance while they're wearing a cross? Well, the weekend. And then we move on to the pre-chorus where he sings, heaven knows that I've been told, paid for the life that I chose. If I could, I'd trade it all, trade it for a halo. So he's saying if he actually could, if he could fight past those compulsions and those habits, he would try to be like a good person. He even says that somebody will pray for him, but he sings, it's too late for me because I think it's safe to say. And that leads into the chorus where he sings, this ain't ordinary life. So he's saying if this were an ordinary life, if I were an, a normal person living what normal people live, yeah, I'd make that decision. Yeah, I'd go with the halo. But as it is, this ain't ordinary life. So I'm gonna have to stick with this. Some of you are probably scratching your heads like, this doesn't quite make sense. And I, and I will assure you, no, you're, you're not wrong. 
there's not a lot of logic to this. Justifying it by saying that it's not an ordinary life doesn't actually explain anything. It just means that it's an exceptional situation and so he's made decisions based on that. Decisions that because we live ordinary lives, we probably won't understand. So we can't really know what's going on inside of his head, except for just to say that it sounds compulsive and habit-based. And if we look back to the song Starboy, where he sings, look what you've done, I'm a mother effing Starboy, uh, we can guess that he partially blames his fans and everybody who gave him money for his music. Anyway, it's that kind of depth and interestingness in this song, Ordinary Life, that really makes me like just love thinking about it and love talking through it to you guys. Ordinary Life shows the weekend at his most conflicted. And I'm not sure if he's celebrating that or if he is bemoaning that, but he is stating it for us to hear. So there's something to learn, something to learn about him, something to learn about that lifestyle. And for that, I think that Ordinary Life is an awesome song. Hopefully you have a better understanding of Ordinary Life by the weekend. If that's something that you're excited about, please comment below a song that you'd like to hear me explain. Join the song meaning community. Check out some other videos that I've done explaining songs by the weekend, particularly from the album Starboy. And yeah, let's have a great time. I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching.